now on BBC One, BBC London News with Emily Maitlis. Tonight, the counting is almost at an end. In the next few minutes, we'll be hearing just who will be the Mayor for London for the coming four years and what that will mean for this city. In the end, the race was much more closely fought than anyone had previously imagined, with Stephen Norris giving Ken Livingstone a run for his money right up to the wire. The media, as you can see, already gathered here behind me, already scribbling, poised to bring you those results just as soon as we get them here at the heart of London government, City Hall. Hello, good evening. This is BBC London News brought to you live from City Hall. It's now 21 hours since the polls closed. Still, the race to be mayor is, as they say, too close to call. Our political editor, Tim Donovan, is in the chamber, seven floors down from here. He'll bring you any results as they happen. And John Gaunt's afloat on the Thames. He's with Londoners who have a strong message for whoever wins the keys to the mayor's office. Also tonight, the cartoonist's unique view of the day's events. Can he see what it's all about yet? Well, let's go straight to Tim in the chamber where the result of the mayoral election will come hopefully in the next hour or so. Uh, Tim, as we've been saying, both Livingston and Norris said this was going to be very close. How are things looking right now? It is uh, going to be close. Uh, my gut feeling is it won't be quite close enough for, uh, for Steve Norris. Steve Norris are not yet here at City Hall. Ken Livingston, we know, uh, is in the building. There appears to have been broadly a 4 to 5% swing uh, from Labour to the Tories. The big question is whether that is quite enough to, uh, uh, to give Steve Norris uh, the mayoralty. We are left at this stage with two more uh, assembly votes to come through. And once they come through, within the next half an hour, three quarters of an hour, we hope, uh, calculations will be done, frantic calculations will be done, confirmed here at City Hall, and uh, then we should get a result. But um, don't hear that from me. Hear that from Jonathan Kinsella, who's one of the people that's been uh, organising and arranging elections today. What is the latest? When are we likely to get a result? We're very, very close. We've got two constituencies to come in once those votes have been tabulated downstairs in the central calculation room. And then it depends whether or not any one candidate's won 50% of the vote. If they haven't, then the second votes come into play. That does take time. We might be sort of 20 minutes, half an hour, maybe 40 minutes away. Not and, just, far. and just while we've got you here, just a, a word on turnout up, reasonably good? It is. We're talking about 37.5%, which is a, a big success for us. It's been a very good day. OK, now Jonathan has mentioned there, obviously we'll wait to see whether one candidate has got more than 50%. It looks very, very unlikely. It then looks like a, a, a playoff, if you like, between uh, Ken Livingston and Steve Norris. Senior members of the Norris team have said not long ago that they think it's all over uh, for him and that Ken Livingston uh, might win by as many as eight points, eight percentage points. Other people think that that uh, is likely to be a much narrower margin. It's going to come down to second preferences. And there's one factor here that's been playing out all day, which is what UKIP, uh, United Kingdom Independent Party, have been doing in London. Uh, they've been scoring 16% of the vote in one constituency, Bexley and Bromley. They um, beat Labour into fourth there. And that may, may have uh, be a factor in the second preferences. Yeah, some interesting factors uh, coming into play there. We may not yet know who has won the race to be mayor, but as Tim was hinting, some of the constituency results for the Assembly are now in. Here's Tom Edwards with the very latest picture. And I therefore declare that on the basis of those results that Robert John Blackman has been elected as the representative for Brent and Harrow. A big upset for Labour in Brent and Harrow. Lord Toby Harris still smiling, but the leader of the Labour Party in the Assembly has lost out to the Conservatives. He's also chair of the Metropolitan Police Authority. This is a mid-term result. Obviously, I'm disappointed, but I'm pleased in what I've been able to do for the people of Brent and Harrow, and indeed uh, for London, in terms of the contribution I've made to improving policing in our city. Clearly, we're of gain seats and, and we've knocked out the, the leader of the Labour Party on the, the Assembly. They find themselves now headless and they've obviously got difficult decisions to make. Before today, the Assembly looked like this. The Conservatives had nine members. The Liberal Democrats, four. The Greens, three. And Labour, the joint largest party with nine members. The Assembly's job, to monitor the decisions made by the Mayor. Today in Lambeth and Southwark, Labour held on, 
and national issues did have an impact. It's definitely the, a fact that you know many people uh, in London uh, are very concerned about the Iraq war and it's come across on the phones, come across on the doorstep. In Hounslow in the southwest area, the Conservatives also held on but with a reduced majority, with the United Kingdom Independence Party eroding the Tory vote. But many now say that in the Assembly the tide has turned. I think the people of London uh, have not endorsed Livingston overwhelmingly. He's had to fight for this one. Uh, but it shows that in Barnet and Camden he has no mandate whatsoever. And while most held their constituencies, those areas that changed hands could prove decisive. Tom Edwards, BBC London News. Well, everything, of course, in its own good time. We're still waiting for the rest of the constituency counts to declare before that all-important mayoral result can be announced. But we can go live to Carl Mercer at, at the Alexandra Palace, what's now become the counting centre. Carla, any idea when those final declarations could arrive? Yeah, the latest we have just in the last couple of minutes is those last two constituencies could be in just before we go off air, around about 7 o'clock. But as you said, it was expected that most of the Assembly constituency votes would be in around mid-afternoon. And there appears to have been a problem with a number of rejected ballot slips across the whole of the capital. Something like 1 in 12 of votes that were cast weren't actually registered. The problem seems to be that Londoners haven't really taken on board these new voting slips. Of course, there were five votes that they had, and that's something that is going to be addressed by returning officers across the capital and councils. With me now, Peter Stanion, uh, you're working at Enfield, Peter. A serious concern, one in 12 ballots not being counted. It is a concern. I mean, I think the first thing we need to stress is the decision to combine the elections wasn't one taken by returning officers. It was actually a government decision to delay the elections to the 10th of June. Um, because of that, it made, particularly in London, it very, a very, very complex ballot. Um, what we've tried to do, I think we need to put it in context here today, we've dealt with over 700,000 ballots through the machines. Um, there will inevitably be some confusion as to, for voters as to how they actually complete those ballots. Peter, briefly, time for an investigation into what has gone wrong. There will be people who voted who say, I haven't been able to exercise my democratic right. Well, yeah, I mean, following every election there are uh, reviews as to what's actually taken place and um, the GLA and, and uh, Electoral Commission will actually look into what's actually taken place and hopefully again improve it for the future, um, future elections. Thanks very much, Peter. And with that, Emily, promise of an investigation for those Londoners who weren't able to cast their vote. It's back to you at City Hall. Mm, thanks, Carl. Uh, certainly five boxes uh, could have been too much for this round. Uh, certainly it takes a while longer in the booth that you